Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ah. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Listen. Listen to me. I respond to an average of five to six hundred text messages every day people sending me text messages from around the world i wake up with text messages and call my phone is never off even as i'm on stage here it's on silent and most of it is the accolades of men what manner of a man of god are you i just listened to your message apostle can you come for this conference and sometimes i keep these text messages and i just look at them this is what brings down mighty men this is what destroys the great this is what cut short the relevance of men and you know while uh, while all that drama is happening sometimes i go on youtube myself and i'm watching all the videos joshua selman joshua selman and i stare at it i say oh god may this deception never get into my heart may i never forget in my life that without you I can do nothing deliver me from this demon called ministry and keep me loving you all the days of my life there is a call called ministry but there is a demon too called ministry the spirit of religion you will give up his presence a thousand times to maintain a show of being okay before men I hope you like what I'm saying You see, you can fake this thing before men, but there is the all-seeing eye of the ancient of days. The one who marks the scripts of men and vets the sincerity of your passion. It is not so much about your eloquence. Believe me, when God's jealousy comes upon your life, even you, you will see the gaps in your understanding and yet he will pick you all the same because in his economy, he does not need creativity he needs yieldedness when he finds you he will be the one to give you the grace for the creativity when it has to do with the pursuit of god creativity is not needed it's your surrender and your hunger is when you need to legislate on behalf of his majesty that is where creativity is needed one of the biggest secrets in my life i will tell you is my love for god it's not fasting alone it's not prayer alone it's not spiritual knowledge alone yes i know you are always reading the bible but is it not because you have an itinerary that is packed full so you are reading quickly because your ego is at stake and you need to defend the perceptions people have about you no sir affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you change my life breathe on me i look to you for life change my life breathe on me i look to you for life listen When you stand on stage and you begin to make bold claims that only a relationship should produce, you will be disappointed. Many times our secret place is, is absent of fellowship. And yet we stand on stage and say, oh my God, my maker, the one who will heal people here. And there is a strange incense rising from your voice to heaven. And heaven is saying, when did this one start? this is a strange i'm not used to you calling me this name you, you are not a person of the secret place from where did you start imagine a man i always give this example i'm sure there is a name reverend dan calls his wife that is a product of intimacy are we together now if he does not have a healthy relationship with her and stands on stage right now you're not used to calling your wife honey or sweetheart and just for the sake of your reputation you call her honey the way she will respond to you you too you will know you are lying 
what should be an object of intimacy is now a strange incident is is pungent because it was not from the purity of your heart how many of us can call upon god and says this is a familiar voice this is a voice whose altar is known and seen in the realm of the spirit do you not know that when you call upon him demons to hear they are witnesses of your communion your love for god please hear me it is good to be ambitious but i bring you to a place where your love for god must supersede your desire some of you now have your small groups your small fellowship and you're about killing yourself now because your ego wants to kill you leave all those things and focus on his presence listen to what i'm telling you it will never tire me to say it here i never had a desire for ministry bishop sir i never had a desire for fame or going around the world doing these things it still is not my desire till today you made me great it's a song i wrote for him you made me special you made me great i give all i have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you this has been one of the few years that i've had the privilege to really rest aside from covid i don't spend two full weeks in a year at home i sleep in the plane i wake up there I don't respond to up to 30 percent of the invitations that come because i cannot cope and sometimes i'm so tired and i'm asking why are you doing all this then i remember it is not for fame oh. it's not to make a name my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you forget about greatness in the spirit if all you are looking for is a passion to outshine others a passion for a name so that they say joshua selman that great man oh no you miss it already i assure you the justice system of god vets your motive till he finds himself in you god is not a politician that you just come and play politics around your love and your passion for god listen to me man of god woman of god hear me i do not doubt the call upon your life i do not doubt the fact that truly his grace is upon you and make no mistakes you are not even aware of how far his majesty can take you when he invests his jealousy upon your life but this morning leave ministry let's focus on that altar no more prayer why i am busy i'm trying to reach the world no more prayer oh i have sons and daughters i must mentor and while all that activity is happening heaven is watching you and saying was this why you fasted five years ago was this why you rolled on the floor five years ago was this all you were looking for a jeep and a five-star hotel is that the circumference of your passion for me my best lord everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you it is my desire to live as long as i can live serving the purposes of the kingdom but if i die today let it be that yes i did not finish my assignment but let it not be that i misled a generation that even when i'm there seated 
in heaven rejoicing at his feet let it be that every truth that the earth listens to from me is helping to introduce them to me my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you your love for god you are a worship minister and you are asking apostle how can i go around the nations you know every time people see me their first question is how can i get a double portion of this anointing and and in all fairness i don't mean to be sarcastic but many times it's just because they are disturbing me i just lay my hands and let them go even me i know nothing came on them even if they fell down it's just so that they will just allow me go otherwise they can tear my cloth or something so i just allow them but me and god we both know that nothing really happened there you know what it means to receive a man's grace you must receive his hunger too you must receive a man's love stop receiving impartations without finding out the hunger of men you will only be wasting your time your hunger and your passion is the bowl you receive to receive that anointing there are anointings when you receive you cannot sleep like a normal human being again so before you cry for that anointing ask yourself first am i that yielded that you can be tired and just when you are about to sleep his majesty comes and says get up we need to talk and for the next five hours you are with him while others are snoring you are crying and praying over people you do not know that's what it takes to be anointed my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you yes ago the lord told me son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you leave that celebrity ambition i am telling you please listen to me be careful who you listen to and be careful don't criticize people don't go around the body of christ fighting men of god don't do that whether you are right or wrong you will bring judgment on yourself i assure you correcting the body of christ is an office not everybody who observes wrong just goes around correcting no there is an office and the first requirement is not awareness it is love right now everybody is correcting everybody no we're all going to mess up and create another kind of error we will create another hybrid of error that would destroy younger generations coming please hear me you want to rise higher in the spirit you want to be given grace and power more than your prayer and fasting more than your bible study your heart years ago the lord asked me a question and said son can you die for me i know many of you say yes i come from the north i know the meaning of that question i thought about it sincerely and i said no I've been persecuted many times for you but I don't know if I can die for you and God did something in my heart I stand before you Enugu to tell you this man you see is already a dead man for for me to live is Christ and if I die it is still gay when you see God using a man find out why don't just say oh this is wonderful no the price of life is death death is the currency you use to buy life so when you say you want life the demand is not money the demand is not your certificate the demand is death as proof of your love are we together now most of the challenges we have in the body of christ come because there is no fear of the lord not because there is ignorance the fear of the lord whether it is manipulation whether it is whatever it is a product of lack of the fear of god when you truly fear god with all your hearts let me tell you sincerely please look at me 
when you fear god sincerely you will not ask people to fast and then you are eating fish in your room are we together now no you are not going to ask for a vigil and then you are there sleeping too not because anybody will flog you your fear the fear of the lord insists that you are right and you are true can we pray over this can we turn what i've just said into a prayer point listen i know that our time is gone but in two minutes i don't know how you are going to cry to god take this idol this idol in my heart this obsession for fame and power today we have enemies that are needless in life and ministry because my ego was tongue my reputation was tongue only dead men can carry god oh the size of god is so heavy if you are alive it will kill you only dead men can carry him your love and your passion lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray in one minute from the depth of your heart When you love the Lord, you will love his sheep. When you love the Lord, you will not only use members, you will love them sincerely. A pastor after his heart, a worship leader after his heart, a deacon after his heart, an apostle after his heart, a prophet after his heart. Purge my heart, oh God. Don't be embarrassed by your prayer. Don't be embarrassed by your cry. One minute we are praying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart Lord, I will bow to you To no other God But you, Lord Lord, I will worship you Nothing has but you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your love for him the grand secret to see his hand upon your life i love i love i love your presence i love i love i love your presence I love, I love I love you Jesus I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love uh -huh. Listen, when you love the Lord, you know that all I have belong to Him. Find a way of believing what I'm telling you. You can listen to the messages of any man of God you want to hear. You can put it in your ears and sleep overnight in an attempt to receive anointing. You will never get anything until heaven vets the sincerity of your motive. Your love and your passion for God. I love him with everything that is within me. 
believe me when I tell you this it is still an honor for me today to be doing that which I do for his majesty but it was never about it never about it when people were complaining about the pandemic because you know it enclosed people now of course I, I do not like the fact that people's lives were halted but for me I almost didn't know when the lockdown was over because it was a most cherished opportunity Lord this is an opportunity again to catch up on my love for you that ministry schedules may not even allow me to spend that time When all is said and done, please take it down for me. I feel like singing that song. Can you say go down my voice? When it's all is said and done, there is just one thing that matters. Did I live my life? To live for truth did I live my life for you not the empires you built when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life do you love him simon bajona lovest thou me more than this man of god it is true that there is a great unction upon your life i'm not asking you if you can preach i know you can i'm not asking you if you can heal i know you can i'm not asking you if you can sing you're already a powerful worshiper i'm not asking you if you have the spirit of revelation we know you do i'm not asking you if you can prophesy your prophetic grace has been proven my question is to what degree do you love him woe betides the day that i exalt anything above him woe betides that day may it never come and may it never happen not today not in my lifetime number two please bring the vessels the second key for time's sake i thought i would give three but i would just give two our time is gone the second key to a life of power a life of grace and glory is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the power that comes from him Acts chapter 1 verse 8 I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings 
your influence is all over me listen the system of the kingdom is such that you cannot do the work of the kingdom by the strength of the flesh the bible already observes that by the strength of the flesh shall no man prevail ministry is a task that requires more than secular intelligence you will face persecution you will be misunderstood God will give you instructions that will create controversy around your life. It will take more than psychological stamina to survive end time ministry. You will need an empowerment that comes from heaven. Every time God called people into the work of the ministry, he did not allow them go like that. He insisted until the power of the highest came upon them. In Acts chapter 1, when you read from verse 7, Jesus was mentoring them for 40 more days after his resurrection. And they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Then verse 8 says, but you shall receive. Anything to receive can be rejected. You shall receive power after not before not during so the first thing you receive is not power it is a personality the holy ghost and then when his walkings prevails over your life the reward for that intimacy is power you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you the power does not make you a man of god the power does not make you a prophet the power does not make you an apostle the power does not make you a worshiper the power makes you a witness a witness is a validator of a claim there is no need for a witness until there is a contention in the court of law when you when there is a contention over a claim a witness is necessitated and his assignment is to validate that which has been said in this end time god is looking for witnesses more than men of god more than apostles and prophets validators men and women who will bring the pride of nations to their knees and reveal a dimension of the excellency of the kingdom that confounds principalities and powers like i said yesterday to come on the strength of our spiritual connection in a few minutes something is going to come upon your life an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities our spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advance is based on covenant that means that god finds a people and enters a personal covenant with them that becomes his access point to reveal that dimension on earth and all through within the lifetime of those individuals god will never manifest that possibility anywhere on earth in disalignment to those vessels understand what i'm teaching you when it comes to the matters of the spirit and the anointing i'm not teaching you an outsource information this is an office i know what i'm talking about One time, I started having encounters with the saints of old. Now, understand that every time we teach these things, the Bible is the foundational pattern for our spiritual growth. When we share these supernatural experiences, it's not to create a passion in you higher than your love for scripture. Are we together now? These are only systems that support the things that scripture had said i remember i started having encounters 
with many of those you call the generals and they would come to me and share mysteries and some of them would share with me where they failed in their own generation I remember in one of these encounters a middle height man came to me and after talking the light that beamed from him and when we were done talking he turned and he was on his way going and I looked at him and I said you did not tell me your name sir and he looks at me and turns back and smiles and he said Paul and he turned and walked away I am a product of many anointings I am a product of many encounters years ago I started searching for those who carried the mantle of the generals because I felt that there was a burden upon my life for this generation and I wanted to become a system of preservation and continuity of the program of God and one of the people I met began to tell me a story you've heard me say it many times that before Smith Wigglesworth would die he called Lester Sumro and said do not die with this mantle when you are old find young men and transfer this grace upon them and when he laid hands on me he said you will become a continuity of these graces this is like a relay it has come from one person to the other the chiefest of all encounters was when the Lord Jesus himself now appeared to me we're about to pray something will happen now when I begin to say what I'm saying that's why I say be sensitive because God gave me a promise and there is a covenant I have with him when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I was flat on the floor light in its brilliance came from him to me he did not speak with his mouth but he was talking to me I knew what he was saying then in one of the encounters help that gentleman please the Lord spoke to me and said son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then I saw this huge angel and the Lord said this angel will walk with you he's called the angel of the Lord's presence and he will be responsible for the signs the wonders the miracles listen to me dear men of God the Lord gave me an instruction years ago and he said every nation every city and every territory I send you to among the many things you will do there make sure the light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting that the light that came from me to you will also come upon those people Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Open up the gates. Listen after that encounter I took my Bible and I started understanding things I never studied there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation I would go to bed and angels will come to my room and open my Bible to specific scriptures I don't share a lot of my encounters because I don't want people to create idolatry out of these things. Our assignment 
is to promote Jesus and to lift him. Tonight is a miracle service. We are still going to pray for people. But please hear me. For someone here in the next few minutes, something is about to come upon your life and your destiny that will so change you in a way and manner that will surprise you. Many of you will go back to your churches and you will marvel and wonder at the dimension of the spirit that you begin to walk in. This is not for personal or vain glory. This is to equip us so that we stop becoming noisemakers. We become people with evidence indeed. There is too much talking in the body of Christ. I say this respectfully. I didn't used to walk very strongly in the prophetic. Here and there I would give a word of knowledge. But I heard them criticizing a man of God called William Branham. Men of God always talked about that man and tore him and tore him as if he missed God and missed everything. And one night I was watching his video and I said, my God, look at the humility of this man. There are few men on earth that I know today, including myself, who come close to the humility of this man with respect to the kind of glory that he carried. And yet people are there tearing the man down. And suddenly something happened to me. Light right from him in the laptop where I was watching. And something came upon me. And for a period of about 30 minutes, it was going down my body. I said, what is happening to me? And by the next meeting I went to, the heavens were open in a way and manner. I received a grace, not only a grace that reveals, a grace that creates. So that what has no business happening is made to happen. Please don't think what I'm saying is pride. I wish I'm not the one to, I hope you don't misunderstand me. I, I, I do not trivialize anybody's grace here. I'm only sharing with you something by the privilege of the election of grace. I have been to almost every campground in this nation. I am a product of many anointings. I've had the privilege of and the honor of receiving graces from fathers, from mighty men and women of God, dead and alive. That anointing was invested upon me not for my sake, but for the sake of God's people and every time we come for conferences like this among the many things that happen is an opportunity to distribute graces that are either dormant or vacant within a land to the end that there be a greater establishment of the purposes of God not to show that a man of God is anointed but hear me there is a spiritual protocol to receiving the anointing you do not receive from a colleague you do not receive from a friend there is a non-negotiable law of spiritual transference you must discern not in the flesh in the spirit and elisha said my father my father the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof i know that men of god sadly have idolized this issue of impartation you know and made a lot of nonsense and immaturity out of it but i tell you the truth if all you see is a man in the flesh you will not receive anything your spirit must be opened to receive something that will change your life we have five ten minutes to do this i'm going to pray on this oil as a point of contact please help that person there there are angels that signify dimensions. There are angels that signify anointings. 
there are angels that signify revelations revelations 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he sent it and signified it by his angel many of you will be drinking into ancient fountains dimensions you have seen in your dreams you have seen in your visions some of you you have seen it for many years and you've been asking lord when will this come i open to you by the spirit a portal of higher spiritual reality now arise O oh lord come to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness we celebrate your love spirit of the living god i pray over this oil i only stand by the privilege of the election of grace and i pray over your precious people in this place lord i pray that this oil will activate virgin dimensions in the spirit i pray that ancient fountains will be opened over your people and that everyone under the sound of my voice upon whom this oil comes let it be a strange impartation let the spirit of grace and the spirit of glory let the unction for signs for wonders for miracles territorial anointings rest upon your people please please i want you to respect all the servants of god don't come around them just leave them where they are in the name of jesus christ um they have the option whether or not they can touch the oil or not or they can receive there let's give them that honor as servants of god but wherever you are the oil will be there you will just come out to your row so guys you will just stand in front of the various rows from the front just come out touch and then go back come out touch and go back let there be a few ushers for those who will be under the anointing the ushers can receive the impartation last can they open this You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed In the name of Jesus Christ, we anoint these oils. Okay. Praise the Lord. Now, listen, hold on, please. Um, Reverend has requested that he should be given um, a bowl. I would respectfully honor it. And so, please, some of these people, especially to serve the ministers, please allow a man of god a father of faith so please the fathers can serve just please give give one of any of the pastors thank you so much sir we honor your humility sir thank you please make sure the all the people holding this if you're doing that please withdraw it let a man of god you you they don't need to come out you can just walk around with it for them there if it's possible 
but in the name of Jesus please come out now some of you as soon as you touch that oil please stand turn and face them okay go ahead please touch it and then turn back to your seat in the name of Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you as you touch it you return back begin to pray in the spirit New dimension. someone begin to pray and prophesy over your life and your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ speak over your ministry I step into new dimensions of kingdom relevance great power for the journey ahead in the name of Jesus I decree and I prophesy by the mighty hand of God signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ This 
man. Come. Lift your hands. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands here. I'm seeing fire come on you. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Selabots kabarandas kabris katabareda silaparudias ebretises yebaratus. Please pray, don't be distracted. My friend, lift your hands. Take that grace. This is your prayer. Prophesy over your ministry. My ministry can never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Salvation for His Majesty. The miracle ministry. No more stagnation. No more delay. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of revelation. The spirit of power upon my life. Numerical growth. Financial growth. Access to the power of God. please lift your hands i'm still going to speak in the night but this is a pastor's session in the name of jesus i want you to believe every word that is coming upon your life for if you will believe you will be surprised at what happens to you every dead ministry or every dying ministry hear the word of the lord i speak to you talita kumi arise in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire prayer fire the grace to fast the grace to study take that anointing in the name of jesus hallelujah listen one of the tools that the devil is using in this end time to cripple ministries is lack of the availability of financial resources there are many people who love god with all their hearts but the devil keeps crippling the finances of well-meaning churches so that they will not have the wherewithal to preach but i stand tonight in the name of jesus and i prophesy to you as surely as the lord god lives i invoke upon your life the mystery of divine supplies strange supplies i speak to the east i speak to the west i speak to the south and the north everywhere your supplies are in this season i command it into your bands listen there are many of us you love the lord but there are things that are eating your life they are making you not to be a man of solid character you love god but these things continue to destroy your ministry every altar that sponsors anything that is not of the christ destroying your reputation in ministry I command those altars, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Members come to your church. They receive of the miracles. 
they receive of the word and then they leave they come but the grace that keeps the grace that stays people is not there in the name of jesus i speak over your life receive the grace for retention hallelujah a man of god must be sound in doctrine a man of god must be able to teach truth with clarity and balance there's someone here you have been praying for the spirit of revelation sincerely because you love your people i pray for you like fire from heaven may that grace rest upon you now now i thought i'll be able to do that prayer in the night but the lord is asking me to do it here there is a grace for signs and wonders please hear me now many people can claim they walk in miracles miracles are not stories they are provable realities here and now sincerely it may not be everybody who will take this grace but from the depth of my spirit i stand in agreement with the leaders the men and the women of god that grace that commands miracles signs and wonders lord upon us many ministers here in the name of jesus take that fire now take that fire now i activate the healing grace the healing anointing like fire let it come upon your life Hallelujah. Hold on, please. Listen to me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray finally before I drop the mic. If you are in ministry here and no one has been able to discern your grace, to place a demand on your grace and to honor that grace listen we are ministers of god but we are humans too your comfort is lies in the fact that men can see what god is doing in your life they can discern it and they can extend hands of fellowship and hands of reward are we together now you cannot indefinitely live under the atmosphere of discouragement let me pray for someone i don't know what has caged your ministry and refused you from rising to a point of kingdom notoriety for the sake of his majesty but in the name of jesus i open that door now yeah. hallelujah hallelujah i'll be teaching tonight on one of the most misunderstood subjects in the body of christ i'll be teaching tonight on one of the most incomplete subjects in the body of Christ I'll be teaching tonight on the subject that for many has empowered Satan so much in our lives and has impeded the move of God in no small way and I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord himself will grant us understanding praise the Lord it is costly to assume that we know it is important to vet our understanding from the lens of the word of God and to not be ashamed when we find the need for adjustment I love the name of the church it gives me the confidence to share freely any church that represents its image with transformation is a church to love the transforming church I think you should celebrate the vision the name yes transformation is the name given to the system that makes you become like christ in experience not just his person but is the process that helps you to capture every dimension of christ to be represented in your person and in your life praise the lord i'll be teaching tonight on the economic system of the kingdom the economic system of the kingdom 
please write it down the economic system of the kingdom as a man of god i have watched the issue of the availability of kingdom wealth and resources cripple the program of god please listen and and don't allow the devil make you shut down deceiving yourself that we're only talking about money what we're dealing with is bigger than money money is the least that we'll be talking about here we're dealing with a matter that is there to the heart of god praise the lord and let me start tonight by sharing a vision that i had some years ago i had this vision where i was at the altar with a great man of god in this nation and then i was to sow a seed please follow me and then i dropped the seed and he beckoned on me to bring everything that i had as though i was hiding something and then i brought out everything that i had and i sowed that seed and then i knelt down and he blessed me and then i was ushered into a very strange room please listen when i entered that room the room was filled with all kinds of choruses all kinds and i wondered who owned this place that would have this level of wealth and abundance and the person who led me asked me to pick and the strange thing was that i was not attached to what i was seeing at all imagine that you are left in a bulk room or the safe of a bank you almost roll on the money first before you think of what to carry but that that attachment was not there i picked a few bundles and that was it and i walked out came out from that vision and one of the few times i would hear the audible voice of god in my life four words massive kingdom wealth transfer i had that until then um the scope of my dealings had to do with the ministry of the holy spirit encounters and generally helping believers to mature in the understanding of the things of god so that was a paradigm shift for me because i didn't come from a background where i had the opportunity to be mentored as far as um the wealth and the blessings of the kingdom and then understanding the economic system of the kingdom and so when i remember when i began to teach along that line a lot of people had a problem with me and said um i think you need to be careful you are missing out on your jurisdiction and then immediately i knew that it was a confirmation that i had touched something that hurt satan the second vision if you don't mind before we begin to teach i was praying many years ago pastor and whilst i was praying my ceiling just disappeared and suddenly this being is looking at me looks like a sea creature like a dinosaur but the tail had its own life the eye was as big as the head of a man fierce red eyes and he was looking at me and i was wondering what is what is all this and then he spoke to me and he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and i knew that is the spirit the bible called mammon so the things that i teach you tonight i know let me let me acknowledge us first before i begin to teach i know i and i acknowledge there are great business men and women here veterans in the area of finance i respect your understanding and i by no means would want to insult your perspectives i want to also appreciate many of us who have labored on this wise to gain understanding and communicate the same to the body but let me submit to you that the things that i teach you tonight will change your life they are not opinions they are not cunningly devised fables the apostle says the things that we have seen the things that we have heard he said that the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life this is what we communicate so are we ready for tonight's teaching in one minute i'd like you to pray lord the seeing eye and the hearing ear lift your voice and please pray please pray The seeing eye, the hearing ear.
the seeing eye and the hearing ear. Shalaproske da bahaskata pradiasha. Karuze desh ke libra akatos yanakatos. Librom des ke de bahashila kapriakatos yata. Limbre tos ke de barush kalatos ke frahaskata baladaba. Please pray. Something is changing. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you, and we will never settle. All right, God bless you. Please be seated. Two scriptures, and then we'll begin for tonight. Psalm 35, please, and verse 27. Thank you, media team. Thank you for your help so that we'll just accelerate um, on a fast pace. Psalm 35 and verse 27. I would prefer KJV, if that is possible. Psalm 35 verse 27. Can we read together? One to read, please. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Which hath pleasure. He does not only give, but he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Are we together? Psalm 112, popular scripture in the body of Christ. The first four verses. The Bible says, blessed is the man that feared the Lord and that delighted greatly in his commands. The next verse says, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. Then it says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. And then it says wealth and riches. He didn't say he will look for it. It will tabernacle in his house and yet his righteousness will endure. It's a description of a kind of man. It gives the indices to know that kind of man. Number one, he says he fears the Lord. He delights greatly in his commands. Number two, he doesn't become great alone. Because part of the systems of dominion is that something must come out of you to dominate to. To validate your dominion. There must be your seed dominating. Are we together? Is the reflection principle when you deal with dominion you cannot glorify yourself your glory is seen in something that comes out of you so the son brings glory to the father and the church in partnership with the holy spirit bring glory to the son then the dominion of the church over principalities and powers this is where the church gets its glory so the bible says he sees shall be mighty upon earth then it says the generation not the family not the relatives the generation of the upright shall be noted that they are blessed and you will know it because wealth and riches will be in their house and in spite of it their righteousness will endure hallelujah so we're going to deal with this. It's a, it's a serious thing. Now, please look up. The kingdom of God is systemic in its operation. You have to understand this. When it has to do with the ways of God, the methodologies of the kingdom, they are systemic. Jesus was teaching about the ecclesia, the formation of the church. And he started by saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, is? 
then some said you are elias some said one of the prophets and he said who do you say that i am and paul speaking by the spirit said i know who thou art he says thou art christ the son of the living god then he says that flesh and blood that means this revelation is not in the realm of flesh and blood flesh and blood has not revealed this to you right but the spirit of my father then he says you are peter and on this understanding i will build my church the understanding listen carefully i will build my church i will not make my church when it was man man was made but the church was built so there is a systemic dimension to the operation of the church and god himself designed the victory of the church to be hinged on systems remember when the army in ezekiel 37 would come back to life the first thing that came back was the structure not the flesh the first thing that will be restored were the bones until bones came then flesh would come then life would follow are we together now so there is an economic system to this kingdom there is a system in the kingdom that guarantees the victory and the protection of the saints are we together there is a system in the kingdom that guarantees the salvation of anyone who wants to be part of it that system was so designed that the word is near us in our hearts and in our mouth romans chapter 10 is that true it says that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus then believing in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will experience soteria sozo salvation it's a system no biases about it anybody anywhere who will engage that system will experience the life of god in biology we have all kinds of systems we have the respiratory system we have the digestive system and none will replace the other now please understand this there is an exact economic system built in this kingdom by which the saints prosper if you attempt to route the blessings of god through any other medium there will be a side effect this is where error imbalance and the grave consequences of seeking for wealth outside of god's system his modus operandi is why people find wealth and with it they find sorrow people find wealth with it they find these kinds of balloon success that they go up today and down tomorrow joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law he said shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then he says then you will make your way prosperous not god and you will have good success hallelujah there is an economic system of the kingdom and please follow me patiently as we run through this system of the kingdom there are certain certain truths that are foundational when it has to do with wealth and abundance and let me just state them i hope i'm not boring you praise the lord number one the desire to access the wealth and the abundance of the kingdom has nothing to do with money it is a time redemption strategy please write it down the battle for wealth is the battle for time and your soul two commodities write it down until you understand the mystery of time and the soul of a man you have no business discussing finances because the real commodity in the realm of the spirit and in destiny is not real estate it's not oil and gas no it's not your manufacturing your products and your services it is your time and your soul this is what satan is after satan is not after your money he's not after your job he's not after your increase he's after your time and your soul because that's truly what is priceless as taught by scripture so please look up the bible starts by telling us in ephesians chapter 5 i will just run through because um i just want to 
let's just do some housekeeping before we begin to teach ephesians chapter 5 paul is mentoring the church in ephesus and then he's telling us to redeem time pastor he said to walk circumspectly the word circumspect means accuracy that means there you will not always have the time to guess make mistakes and come back and correct yourself he's saying your lifetime cannot afford you that template of living you do not have the luxury to waste 10 years then come back and find out i was living a lie and start again so he's he's talking about accuracy of time are we together now walk circumspectly and he says that your wisdom here is demonstrated by routing a system that has dominion over time that whoever conquers time is wise remember we're discussing finances time the unit of destiny is time destiny is a function of time let me tell you this look up please no matter what leaves you if time is still there you are not at a loss lose money and gain time you did not lose make mistakes and have time you will still come back but have everything and lose time you are finished so says the desire of a dying man a dying man will not ask you for more land a dying man will not ask you for more promotion more degrees a dying man will plead for more time isaiah 38 that was the cry of hezekiah remember oh god do i not deserve time and god blessed him by extending time so the real loss in a man's life is not properties it's not money it's time and satan is aware of this please understand the battle for wealth is the battle for time redemption he's telling us that we do not have all times for all things so you must redeem time I've said it again and again and I will continue to say it. It takes time to know God. You don't know God in a nutshell. It does not work in the pursuit of God. It takes time to know God. You don't summarize knowing God by looking at one or two verses. No. There are times that you will stay to know God and he will patiently come as though you don't have anything to do. They that wait on the lord not they that wants to see him those who are ready to invest time are you getting what we're saying now so we're dealing with time here that whoever can can have dominion over time according to scripture is a wise man and he says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because because the days are evil so god interjected systems of advantage in our work so that by these mysteries of the kingdom we will be able to exert dominion over time did you know that in africa most families did not have the opportunity to know god early is that true now if you get born again at age 30 i hope you know based on the schedule of destiny you are very late because that's when jesus was fulfilling his assignment and you get born again by 30 which looks very early in africa yet you are in trouble because it will take time for you to argue about the ministry of the holy spirit until you finally receive him it will take time to argue about all of these things until you are finally filled with the holy ghost then submit yourself to the mentorship of a correct pastor if you find a wrong pastor be ready to reverse after 10 or 15 years remember it's not every shepherd that is after his heart are we together so i get born again at age 30 i take 10 years to establish myself in the knowledge of god even if i have 120 years to live time is already against me there has to be something introduced into my space that can help me gain time this is why he interjected mysteries like mercy like favor i will restore the years now listen everybody's destiny by default is disadvantaged 
you rewrite your destiny by taking advantage of these systems that have been put in the economy of god add it to your destiny and then you start changing things so that god can make your your predicament of 20 years be remedied within one year you have gained time are we together if you finish school in 2000 and you just got a job now it's almost not a blessing are we together now humanly speaking i'm not being sarcastic because you know that the number of people who have been queuing up waiting for that money alone will not make it a blessing even if it's one million per month you are receiving you will need a system you will spend your remaining lifetime settling those who have been waiting impatiently for you this is africa we're talking about there is a, there is there is a science to our hardship there is an explanation to it So it is important for us to understand we are not just dealing with money because this is this has been the approach to the subject of wealth and prosperity it comes from a standpoint of lost most people approach the subject of wealth it is just about money and having materials uh, and then proving to people in the village and around that um, no that's too small a reason to get god's attention what about his program here are we together yes you see when believers are mentored and built it is not just truth that blesses but truth that is sequentially arranged truth can kill when if i get born again and the first message i hear is prosperity chances are that i will be a fool and the prosperity of fools destroy them are we together now I'm, I just get born again and my first sermon is prosperity. I have not died to the flesh. And so I will, I will view the subject of wealth from the lens of my corrupt heart and it will destroy me. So there are other truths that must precede that to make the subject of prosperity a blessing. So let me just clarify straight up. We're not just randomly talking about an obsession for more just because we hate poverty. No. There is a better kingdom drive to the things that we're teaching. When you understand the kingdom and you understand what I am teaching, um, I, I'm sorry to be a bit harsh, but it becomes wicked to remain poor. When you understand this, being poor becomes your final prove that you are not interested in god's program this is more than just having enough so time circumspectly as wise not as unwise redeeming what time listen it takes time to raise children and you cannot really raise children by proxy i hope you know that when your child begins to call you uncle because you wake up early in the morning you sleep late at night and only to eat the bread of sorrow they are now left under the mentorship of someone that may not sustain the kingdom values you want them to have multiply this kind of tragedy for 15 years your child has become something you almost cannot correct are we together it takes time to build a healthy relationship with your husband and your wife if the only time you meet is during weekends or when you are settling quarrels that marriage is already broken you need time to pray many people cannot pray because the awareness you hear people say no time no time and that's exactly what the devil likes listen satan knows that once you have time you are dangerous satan fears anyone who has time because he knows what god can do with your time so he finds a way to do something to your time so satan conducted a research himself and found out what do men do with their time on earth and he found out that the greatest investment of our time is to get money that's why money became 
a subject of interest it was never about money he conducted a research and found out that most believers will give their time in exchange for money are we together time and there's nothing wrong with that in itself except for the fact that he knows that if he manipulates the economy he will make you give more time and because you have only 24 hours per day the remaining time you can have to spend with god he will do something so that you can take out of it to still try to get more money so the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow are we blessed already the next thing i'll talk about and then i will begin to teach you cannot imagine i honestly have not even begun this these are just these are preambles what in all in all honesty in all honestly please sit down we're just trying to define terminology so that we're not confused please sit down second thought that i want to communicate i hope you understand what i'm teaching the bible says look up please everybody what shall it profit a man so he's speaking profit now nigeria the bible is speaking profit what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses so the soul and the world are commodities of transaction that you can use your soul as currency to buy the world are we together now the real commodity of exchange is not naira and kobo it's not pounds and dollars it's not oil it's your soul that a man can use his soul so he says are you really in profit when you use your soul to gain the world this is what he's saying and then apostle john now begins to admonish us we're, we're introducing the system of the kingdom now he says i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in hell but but make sure while you prosper your soul is not used as the collateral what shall it profit a man look up please if he gains the whole world remember there were three temptations that satan brought to jesus and the last of them was look bow down to me let me make this thing easy for you i control the cosmos the kings of the mountains have been delegated by me there's no need dying to route through the blood and the cross just bow and i will give you the keys listen you get into trouble with satan when you want to prosper even as your soul prospers now that's that's where hell will fight you you can prosper but he extracts the vitality of your soul while you increase this is how babylon prospers you cannot prosper in the kingdom at the expense of your soul and you cannot prosper outside of the kingdom with your soul being intact the real collateral is your soul so the battle for wealth is not just the battle for finances to have no 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 we are engaging the economic system of the kingdom because we understand that if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable so there is a people who are making an announcement to satan that we will both prosper and our souls will be intact remember psalm 112 wealth and riches shall be in his house yet his righteousness endures you declare that and you have declared war because you see the way satan prospers people in this system is that you bring your soul you don't bring your soul like an occultic initiation he uses time to get your soul when your prayer life dies while you become a millionaire your soul is going are we together 
when your relationship with your wife you become a billionaire and now find an extra room for your wife and say you can't stay with me again i don't trust anybody in this life even my biological mother you think you are being wise but your soul is going there are people the richer they become the more they are starved of sleep they sleep with keys in their hands You have a garage where you park your car you have a safe where you put your money you have boxes where you keep jewelries but you leave your soul exposed so the bible says there is a system that ensures that people continue to endanger their soul while they increase you can easily know who prospered a man by looking at his soul when i see you increase even as your soul prosper you have tapped into the economic system of the kingdom this is why we are here you get the message now so the battle for wealth you see why satan fights this subject it's not about money dear people of god it's about redeeming time preserving our souls and fulfilling destiny I have watched with shock the ease with which people will give up God and give up anything kingdom in pursuit of money it is how Satan designed it because there is a she goddess called Jezebel Jezebel being the system that describes anything Antichrist Jezebel is not just a woman she represents a system and notice that every time Jezebel appears she looks for government Jezebel always wants to sit at the seat of government. Why? Because that's where policies are made. That's where, that's the control room. The merchants of the earth, it is based on their harlotry with Jezebel that they increase. But let me show you what is going to happen shortly. Ready? Revelations 19, please. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Someone's life is shifting already. Because you see, if you, if you will access the blessings of God, you must understand his terminologies. You must understand his heart. And after these things, Revelations 19 from verse 1, I heard a great voice of much people saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power be unto our God, and so on and so forth sorry go to verse 18 chapter 18 chapter 18 and verse 2 ready and he cried mightily with a voice saying look up please babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean things now read verse 3 if you're a christian ready want to read for all nations how many nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth how did they become rich have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth wax rich how through the abundance of her delicacies go to verse 9 the destruction of this system verse 9 let's read together one to read and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning verse 10 standing afar off for the fear of her torment alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city for in one hour how long in one hour is your destruction come in one hour is your destruction come go to verse 11 we're reading and then we'll stop at 13 verse 11 go ahead and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth her merchandise anymore that means babylon is a beast jezebel is a businesswoman it's not just a system 
they is is economically empowered 12. now look at what she sells these are her commodities hmm. ready the merchandise of gold silver precious stones pearls fine linen purple silk scarlet tyan wood all manner of vessels of ivory vessels of most precious wood brass iron marble tartine now let's read together cinnamon and odors and ointments she sells anointing she sells anointing you can buy it from her and become an anointed man and frankincense continue and wine and oil and flour and wheat read on and beasts and sheep and horses read on and chariots and slaves and where did she get them from those who exchange their souls for money what shall it profit a man when you exchange your soul and gain the whole world here is this goddess that sits upon a horse the bible says she's a businesswoman and her products like you have a store shop right you have orange you have this that this woman has a buffet of products among them slaves so i can sing anything and it still sells because there are people who have been subject to that system and the bible says she can sell the souls of men babylon the souls of men do you know how many people have gotten prosperity at the expense of their souls they are still alive but they are dead please sit down they are alive but they are dead in one hour in one hour a man's destruction comes because of your fraternity with Babylon. Ah. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Hey. To break every chain, break every chain. That you will access, Satan will watch you rise like as though in a lift. And he checks your soul and sees that your soul is rising at the frequency of your wealth. That the more you become a millionaire, the more your knees touch the ground. And he says, by what technology has this man accessed? where did he route this ah, job said there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are virgin dimensions left for the sons of light men who will not bow and yet prosper That you can be that businessman who can close your business on Tuesday to worship. And people say it's not normal. You say, of course. Because my fraternity is not with Babylon. I have understood the mystery of the raven that will bring Elijah bread in Brook Cherry. Are we together? even as your soul that's the key word a millionaire even as your soul prospers where you become the treasurer of his majesty it makes no difference whether the wealth is in the throne room or in your account it's all his own and he can make demand at any time listen the reason why you trust your bank is the ease of withdrawal You will run away from any bank that withdrawal becomes difficult please sit down
We've not started talking money. You see that this wealth thing is not just about money. I must be rich. I'm, that's, you see, sometimes in all fairness, when we say these things is the reason why hell does not panic at all. Because the devil knows that we will make a lot of noise and come back after three years and say, I've come. I don't mind my pride of two years before. I, I tried everything. It didn't work. I'm back. If it's the soul like Jacob, let it go. If you listen to what I show you, building on what your pastor has shown you, you will play life like a chess. It's a guarantee that I give you. It's a guarantee. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Even as your soul prospers. I needed to say this so that you don't you don't um, especially for those who may not be members of this church so that you don't think oh there is they're talking about money again let me tell you think like that is a, is a sign that there is an attack on you the very fact that your understanding was so constructed because because there are many things that resources depend on you see let me tell you this I would never have a problem with poverty if it were neutral i hate uh, poverty for one reason its effect in the program of god that's it if poverty were neutral i would not have any problem with it but i hate it because i have discerned the role it can play in impeding the program of god so it becomes my enemy Now let's deal with the economic system of the kingdom proper. There are certain truths that we must know. Number one, in God's economy, please write this down everyone. In God's economy, all wealth comes from God and belong to God. It is important for you to know this all wealth all blessings and all wealth comes from god this is very basic but very powerful that means that human beings businesses systems structures are only vehicles not sources it's an understanding you must have all wealth comes from god your job your destiny helper your business is only a vehicle a funnel not an origin not source by the time your business becomes abba your source sustainer protector listen in this kingdom owners are rebels we don't own things in this kingdom are we together now we are given stewardship you may freely eat of everything but it's not yours the prodigal son had access but he wanted ownership lack started when ownership came for as long as he was in his father's house he had access but he wanted it in his name so owners are rebels in this kingdom we don't own things of course you can say i own it in terms of the demonstration of responsibility but then we do not own things owners are rebels the earth is the lord's and its fullness thereof the walls the systems and all they that dwell therein owners are rebels ownership is what brings all kinds of sicknesses in our world today my car my business my this he said let it not be that when you have built houses you will say to yourself my power and the might of my hand has given me this great wealth but thou shall remember that means you can forget hallelujah look at me please the key to freedom is detachment from things for as long as you are connected to things the stress you listen young people now 20 21 22 have high blood pressure what are they doing with bp 
that's the consequence of violating the patterns of god the bible says moreover it is required in stewards if it is true that you are a steward it is required that a man be found faithful so please understand this in this kingdom we have access not ownership our dominion is shared dominion not absolute dominion our dominion is a derivative of that which christ has done and that which god the the consistency of god's abundance is where we draw from of his fullness we have all received we didn't give him some we received very powerful key to know and to learn it's amazing you see how ownership mentality destroys people it is my car don't touch this it is my own it is my offering my money my company the side effect of ownership is that you are responsible for maintenance when you own that child you will source for the school fees source for the health lord this is your child he has only passed through my womb i will remain a faithful steward but i will leave you to remain abba be the source be the sustainer be the protector be the defender let your jealousy continue to trail this child trail this business because it is yours everybody say all i have belongs to god one more time say all i have belongs to god notice how difficult it is for you to say it because you suspect that the part of the all i have i will say will also involve your finances and i guarantee you god will test it hallelujah so all wealth comes from god and belongs to him number two all blessings including finances now please understand this we're we are setting the foundations now all blessings come from god through men to men this is the second revelation that you must have all blessings including financial resources come from god but they are routed through men to men please look up your job from god through men to men your increase from god through men to men is that is, is is that all right so you need both god and men to prosper god and men and jesus grew luke chapter 2 and verse 52 jesus grew in wisdom in stature he also grew in favor with god and when you have favor with god alone you will have encounters revelations depth but you will be poor you will be delayed in life and you will be a victim it was because jesus had favor with men that he could command that they take another man's donkey and the man did not arrest him you go and carry somebody's car because you are coming to church you see that so do you understand what i'm sharing let's get this straight all wealth comes from god everything that i have comes from god my job is not why i prosper my business is not why i prosper my business is the funnel that allows what comes from god to flow to me so when the job is closed he can use another funnel because the source still remains on the throne so i don't I, a, a man cannot sit down and say i i i will terminate your job and waste your life mm -mm. you can say you terminate my job but stop there because if you add any other thing more than that you are being god you can terminate my job i respect it because it's your company but allow abba to use another funnel to get the blessing for me it's a revelation that has changed my life everything on earth man structure systems are all funnels all blessings 
the popular hymn writer says praise god from whom all blessings not praise cbn not praise all of the great financial houses in the world praise god if your wealth comes from your job you are in trouble it must come from god through your office god through your business god through whatever value adding structures you have but it must come from god are we together say my wealth please say it. my wealth comes from god it comes through men it comes through structures it comes through systems to me so find peace you call him he didn't pick your call don't call again be patient because he is only a funnel prove that you believe he's a funnel by not disturbing him again when you keep calling and say sir you change my life is proof that you are bringing one to run a parallel government with god and his jealousy will fight both you and the person that you are trying to work with the jealousy of god is the factor that makes him protective of everything that is exclusive god please sit down now let's discuss the laws of kingdom wealth the laws of kingdom wealth remember we're dealing with the economic system of the kingdom i'm being very methodical because i really want us to get something of substance i'm trusting as desired by your pastor that god will shift all of us into a new dimension even in this area in the name of jesus please look up um is it all right if i have two gentlemen i like to use people please come you stand here you stand here god bless you let's celebrate them thank you guys stand by my left one stand by my right watch this for many years pastor there has been a very serious vendetta between men of god and business people as to whose perspective about the real formula for wealth is valid and should be followed here is the businessman teaching principles that you know make for wealth and abundance from a business perspective he went to business school harvard business school and all of that and he sh and this these things have been proven but here is a great man of god apostle joshua selman saying forget that nonsense i prophesied over a billionaire and in one night he gave me a car a house and said every month he will be pay me salary now i was say forget this this i look at him with all his teaching are you seeing anything you see so it's been a it's been a contention for years the business people said forget about this pastor he's the only one prospering if you listen to him you will be broke and the pastor is saying look don't downplay the power of prophecy don't downplay the power of the realm of the spirit and then both of them find out that there is a problem with their equation the reason is because both of them are correct but both of them are incomplete the perspectives that they communicate were not designed to replace one another it was supposed to complement one another that both listen both the natural laws of wealth and the spiritual laws of wealth are together called the kingdom laws of wealth sit down please do you understand what i'm sharing with you yes now watch this here is the difference the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the manifestation of resources including finance but it stops there the natural and the business laws are responsible for the management systems and the multiplication this is what makes wealth transgenerational when you dwell here you will always have sudden breakthroughs but you will never have a systemic dimension of increase you are up today down tomorrow one testimony in january the next one december that's not god's desire the path of the just he says is as a shining light the sun does not shine and disappear and comes back two two hours later it continues to brighten are we together so i will pick on the spiritual laws and then we'll end for tonight 
and then please do not miss tomorrow because somewhere in this meeting something will leave heaven and come on your life that will shift you in the name of jesus christ i know this you you will you will not know how changed you are until you step out of this place and then you will see doors open when things happen you will know what spiritual law was responsible for what you will not just give god glory randomly and leave the part you should play you know that this result was governed by my engaging the spiritual law are we blessed thank you guys thank you so they are both called the kingdom laws. so the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance are separated into two number one we have the spiritual laws and then number two we have the natural laws please write it down so that we'll discuss the spiritual laws briefly lend me a few minutes and we're done for tonight can you pray in the spirit while you're writing this hallelujah go ahead and pray Shali lord you spoke well about 2020 i'm already seeing the shift by the spirit light of the world you step down into darkness here's the prayer open my eyes let me see you're the light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see one more time you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me hallelujah please write it down the first spiritual law now i'm going to say a few things that may disturb you just listen just follow me the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance in my opinion is not tithing listen very carefully i believe in tithing tithing is a foundational spiritual law but look up please the first spiritual law of wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender write it down please your tithing means nothing to god and nothing to destiny until god finds his space in your heart and in your life proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 please proverbs 23 and verse 26 when you want to do the business of wealth with god he needs more than your money he needs more than your business he needs your heart proverbs 23 and verse 26 proverbs 23 26 let me quote it okay everyone please read one to go my son uh-huh give me thine heart and then let your eyes observe my ways when i have your heart first then you can understand my methodologies I want your heart not just your tight not just your offering not just your sacrifice it's amazing how we engage these things as though we are bribing God God here is my tight make sure I see the devourer far from me make sure you bring me this quickly I drop it no no your heart is the tray that all your offerings are received from listen very carefully your heart so you can come out of an suv that is hundreds of millions of naira worth and yet it does not move you because he's captured your heart please hear me this is the one mistake with the prosperity gospel pastor it does not seek to surrender the heart of that one who seeks to prosper if god does not find your heart I don't care what you are doing about wealth it's a total waste of time and will not bless the kingdom please understand this my son give me your heart not your offering your heart first it all belongs to you 
Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Any money, any business that will take my heart from you, let it not come. We are still doing finance. your heart so it does not become a do or die affair pastor people kill for money christians kill for money you took my money i will never forgive you what is mine is mine i must eat my share of this and you hear all those kinds of diabolic things and after we say it, we water it down with tongues it does not justify it listen for someone here who wants to be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom leave the issue of money it is your heart listen when you give your life to Christ you really don't give him your heart you receive his life it is when you want to be used by God that you give him your heart I know we say it generally and God understands what you are saying but what happens in salvation is not giving your heart you receive the life of God that was a testament of John this is the record that God has given us the way and that life is in his son whoever hath the son hath eternal life but then he says I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that ye offer when it has to do with laying down is to position you to be used by God sir I submit to you that many believers are not ready for the prayers they are praying. Lord, bless me. Lord, I promise I will not leave you. Money is powerful. There is a dangerous spirit behind money that if your heart is still with you, it will tear you like a lion. You cannot handle money when your heart is with, is with you. The pride of life that comes with money it has nothing to do with being good or bad there is an effect of resources on a human being and it is only the surrendered nature of your heart the problem is because many people who are teaching about wealth are not blessed and and because they are not blessed they don't even know what they are saying oh god forbid that i own 10 estates and that man has never given god one million People give God offering of 100, 100 naira. And right after the service, they eat bonds of 2,000. Are we together? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Why will a man be a multi... Now, I'm not talking about money. It's just a litmus test to reveal your heart. Ah! He said i will not give god anything that will not cost me nothing it's not about the money it's the position of value it's how much i see him lifted and honored see let me tell you sincerely and i stand before the god of heaven i have told god anything i cannot give him may it never come to me never i'm not saying this just because i'm on stage preaching believe me there is nothing I cannot give God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. When you get to this state, you are ready to prosper. Are you seeing that it's not about money? Because many people who want money want it to land on the tray of their lusts. And they want to run to the village to prove a point, to prove this. And God says, no, not my way. If it is my way, you first die before you come alive. Is God speaking to someone? In one minute while you are seated, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you know the lost in my heart. Before I disappoint my own destiny, I pray that you take my heart. You take my heart. It all belongs to you. Please pray. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh oh, 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 it all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you, my son. Give me your heart, not just your business. 
my daughter give me your heart when you give your heart you give your pride too when you give your heart you give your your tendency for being attached give me your heart it's not a do or die affair lord i love you more than money i love you more than business you have my heart we're dealing wealth here if most people touched on this before they began to teach on wealth we will not have the emergence of lost driven people who just want money and they stop coming to church when they are blessed they disregard any grace when they are blessed not when he captures your heart i've been captured by a love i can't explain now you have me and now i'm forever changed i've abandoned everything i've ever known and i surrender this life is not my own i belong to you i belong to you it's a prayer i belong to you huh. my life is not my own to you i belong i give myself i give myself to you please listen to me i want you to take the issue of the surrender of your heart seriously to god it is not only the key to wealth it is the key to everything god first god above god above i can shut any business a thousand times to preserve his presence no i will shut ministry a thousand times to seek for him i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more it's not a song it's my life lord i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more please sit down this is where the incomplete prosperity gospel has destroyed men you have it and we take it and our lust tears us into pieces the more we have money the more our pride grows the more you have money the more you want another wife the more you have money the more god becomes an option to join the queue in your life you say god just wait i'm busy now i have checks to sign join the queue and i will give you an appointment just like i'm giving a minister you just be patient and i will attend to you so he says my son i know the tendencies that come with this cosmos give me your heart i'm a better keeper of your heart than you so when lust comes to enter your heart you say it's too late go to heaven there that's where he's kept my heart hmm. can you look at a billion naira and walk away don't be quick to answer don't be quick to answer remember we're sincere this night don't be quick to answer a billion naira no matter how much money you have in this world a billion naira is something can you look at it and walk away and still say i choose you not as a result of lack of exposure you understand the gravity of what that billion can do to you and you still walk away and say lord i love you that much can you back out of a contract because you saw the terms and you did not find the interest of god in it and you say lord i love you that much when i was in one room and i told you i would never leave you i meant it now that i'm in this palace i will crush it down a thousand times to show the world that i am still with you i tell you sincerely the spirit of god tells me this all the time it is not because believers are not hard working 
it is not because believers are not innovative fundamentally our hearts are not with him so his jealousy cannot come to defend and protect you but after tonight someone's life is changing because for some you will you will go back this night and whilst preparing for tomorrow tonight you will carry your atm put it on the ground your checkbook put it on the ground are we watching now you will carry your contract put it on the ground be magnified oh lord above my checkbook above my bank account you are highly exalted and there is nothing you can't do oh lord my eyes are on you be magnified oh lord be my you look at your business proposal and then you bring it before him and you say lord you are above it all atm never be confused as to who is lord my checkbook i sign millions with you but don't ever get used to my touching you my heart has already touched one before you came and it will remain so mm. this is someone's service already oh this night as we are talking now god is showing you why generationally nobody has been able to break the back of poverty in spite of the businesses you have the, the points you have been accumulating to prove will never let god bless you you have already planned to show your brother